Hi, this is Michelle from the past and I just wanted to talk to you briefly about pumpkin choices on the low FODMAP diet. So typically this is the one that we're used to seeing here in the UK. It's the one that we tend to carve up and make into jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. But increasingly we have got a selection of different sizes, shapes and colours appearing more and more frequently in the supermarkets around this time of year. Now if you are eating a low FODMAP diet, this is the one that you need to look out for. Now this is what's known as a Japanese pumpkin, a Kent pumpkin or a kabocha squash. And typically here in the UK where I shop, they are just sold generically as pumpkins or squashes. But there are a couple of things that you can look out for so that you know you're getting the right one. First up, you can see that it's a very similar kind of shape to a regular pumpkin but it's usually much smaller it can be anywhere from from a quarter to half the size of a traditional medium sized pumpkin you can tell that it's not an acorn squash because it doesn't have that pointed bottom like this which is typical of an acorn squash and another way that you can tell is that the skin is quite knobbly and rough and quite warty unlike an acorn squash which tends to have a very kind of smooth skin so that's another way to tell that you're getting the right one there often will be patches of yellow or orange on them and they also do tend to have these lines that come all the way these grooves that come all the way up and they're kind of mottled with a bit of light green in amongst the, the dark green and that's what you need to look out for these are the ones that you can eat freely on the low FODMAP diet the reason I'm telling you all of this now rather than in the recipe is because this one is actually going past its best I've had this for about six weeks now so they do last really well but unfortunately this one is just starting to show its age so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that section off so you can see now we've got rid of that mouldy bit and we're left with all of this perfectly edible, perfectly usable pumpkin and it gives you a really good view of the inside of this lovely golden flesh. Now I need to do a little bit more prep work to this because I'm not planning on shooting the recipe just yet so I am going to actually chop this pumpkin up and probably freeze it for use in future recipes. Now there's still the issue of the skin with this, once this is cooked the skin softens quite nicely and can be eaten easily, it's just hard to cut through when it's raw. This is fine for roast pumpkin but for use in a soup or a sauce, keeping the skin on will discolour the final dish, so I prefer to peel mine and I'll show you my easy hack for that now. You need a microwave safe dish big enough to take all of your pumpkin chunks in a single layer. Place the pumpkin into the dish skin side down. Once the dish is full, pour over a few tablespoons of water, just enough to cover the base of the dish so that most of the pumpkin skin is sitting in contact with the water. Pop on a vented lid and microwave on high power for two minutes. You're not trying to cook the pumpkin through, just soften it enough to easily remove the skin. Be careful of escaping steam as you open the lid. You should find that the pumpkin flesh is still very firm to the touch but the skin is much easier to cut away than when it was raw. An alternate method is to roast the pumpkin until fully cooked and then scoop the flesh away from the skin. If you use this method because the pumpkin's cooked through it's best to use the pumpkin straight away rather than freeze it. To freeze a peeled pumpkin for future recipes, line a baking tray with freezer or baking paper and lay the pumpkin pieces out in a single layer, leaving room around them for the cold air to flow. This method of free freezing stops the pumpkin chunks from clumping together and makes it easier to defrost only the amount you need each time. It's a great method for freezing all of your seasonal fruits and veggies. If, like me, you don't have access to these FODMAP free pumpkins all year round, then this is a great way to stock up when you find them and save some for later. They should last at least three months in a sealed container in the fridge. After about four hours in the freezer, your pumpkin should be frozen enough for you to remove it from the tray and place it in a freezer safe container without risking it all sticking together. To use the pumpkin, throw it overnight in the fridge and cook it into your recipe for a little less time than you would if the pumpkin was raw. I recommend testing it at the halfway point in your chosen recipe to see how quickly it's softening up. 
If you're looking for inspiration on how to use pumpkin and your low FODMAP recipes, then make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss the recipes we've got coming up over the next few weeks. Let me know in the comments below how you plan on using your pumpkin this year. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.